Hi, welcome back to my channel. In this video, let's discuss about another common condition that is renal failure. So renal failure is the partial or complete impairment of kidney function resulting in an inability to excrete metabolic waste products and water as well as causing functional disturbances of all body systems and it can be classified as acute renal failure and chronic renal failure. In this video, I'm going to discuss in depth about acute renal failure, which is a clinical syndrome characterized by rapid loss of renal function with progressive azotemia and accumulation of nitrogenous waste products, such as urea, nitrogen, and creatinine in the blood. Electrolyte and fluid status also changes, but only a few symptoms may be seen in patients at this stage. The common causes of acute renal failure are pre-renal causes, which are leading to um, uh, renal failure, and that is due to factors external to the kidneys that reduce renal blood flow and lead to decreased GRF or glomerular perfusion and filtration. Intrarenal causes of acute renal failure include conditions that cause direct damage to the renal tissue, resulting in impaired nephron function. And post-renal causes involve mechanical obstruction of urinary outflow. As the flow of urine is obstructed, urine refluxes into renal pelvis, impairing kidney function. The prerenal causes of ARF are one is hypovolumia, which can occur due to dehydration, hemorrhage, gastrointestinal losses, which could be caused due to diarrhea or vomiting, excessive diuresis, hypoalbuminemia, burns, and further some causes could be due to decreased cardiac output, which can occur in cardiac dysarrhythmias, cardiogenic shock, heart failure, myocardial infarction. It can also occur in decreased peripheral vascular resistance, which can be caused by anaphylaxis, neurologic injuries, and septic shock. Further, it can occur due to decreased renovascular blood flow, which can occur in bilateral reno, renal thrombosis, embolism, hepatorenal syndrome, renal artery thrombosis. Intrarenal causes of acute renal failure are prolonged prerenal ischemia, nephrotoxic injury due to drugs, which could be like aminoglycosides like gentamicin and amikacin, amphotericin B, radiocontrast agents, hemolytic blood transfusion reaction, severe crash injury, chemical exposure due to ethylene glycol, lead, arsenic, carbon tetrachloride. Interstitial nephritis due to allergies, which can be caused due to, uh, I mean, antibiotics like sulfonamides, rifampicillin, non-steroids anti-inflammatory drugs, ACE inhibitors. Infections like bacterial, which could cause acute pyelonephritis, viral infections like cytomegalovirus, and fungal infections like candidiasis could lead to renal, acute renal failure. Acute glomerulonephritis, thrombotic disorders, toxemia of pregnancy, malignant hypertension, and SLE or systemic lupus erythematosus. Post-renal causes of acute renal failure are benign prostatic hypertrophy, bladder cancer, calculi formation, neuromuscular disorder, prostate cancer, spinal cord disease, and trauma of the back, pelvis, and perineum. The different phases of acute renal failure are, the first one is that of onset phase, which is the main features are common triggering event, uh, events like significant blood loss, burns, fluid loss, diabetes insipidus, renal blood flow 20%, 25% of normal, and tissue oxygenation 25% of normal, urine output below 0.5 ml per kg per hour. So this onset phase can uh, occur or it can 
be there for a duration of few hours to days. Second phase could be of oliguric or anuric phase wherein the urine output will be below 400 ml per day, possibly as low as 100 ml per day. Increase, there is an increase in the BUN and creatinine levels. Electrolyte disturbances will be seen, acidosis and fluid overload from kidneys inability to excrete water. It can last for 8 to 14 days or longer depending on the nature of the renal failure and dialysis initiation. The third phase is the diuretic phase which occurs when cause of acute renal failure is corrected, renal tubule scarring and edema occurs, increased glomerular filtration, daily urine output will increase above 400 ml, possible electrolyte depletion from excretion of more water and osmotic effects of high blood urea nitrogen. It can last for 7 to 14 days. Fourth phase is that of the recovery phase. I mean, once if it is corrected, there could be a decreased edema, normalization of fluid and electrolyte balance and return of glomerular filtration rate to 70% to 80% of normal. And this can last from several months to one year. The clinical manifestations of acute renal failure are urinary, in the urinary system, you could see there is a decreased urine output, proteinuria, casts will be seen, specific gravity will be decreased, decreased osmolality and increased urinary sodium. Cardiovascular, there could be volume overload, heart failure, hypotension, higher uh, in the early phase and hypertension after development of fluid overload, pericarditis, pericardial effusion and dysarrhythmias. Respiratory symptoms are that of pulmonary edema, small respiration, pleural effusion. Gastrointestinal system symptoms are those of nausea and vomiting, anorexia, stomatitis, bleeding, diarrhea and constipation. Hematological symptoms are anemia. Development can occur within 48 hours. There is an increased susceptibility to infection, leukocytosis, defect and platelet functioning. Neurological symptoms are those of lethargy, seizures, astrexis, memory impairment. Metabolic symptoms are there is an increase in blood urea nitrogen, increase in creatinine, decreased sodium, increased potassium, decreased pH, decreased carbonate level, decreased calcium and increased phosphate. The diagnostic tests could be, I mean definitely by history and physical examination, one will be able to identify the um, precipitating cause. The uh, serum, creatinine and BUN levels need to be checked, serum electrolytes, urine analysis, renal ultrasound, renal scan, CT scan or MRI and retrograde pilogram as indicated. The collaborative therapy, that means the treatment of precipitating cause is important then fluid restriction has to be done in the initial phase, wherein we need to give about 600 ml plus the previous 24-hour fluid loss. In nutritional therapy, adequate protein intake, that is 0.6 to 2 gram per kg per day, depending on the degree of catabolism, potassium restriction, phosphate restriction, and sodium restriction. Measures to lower, lower potassium if it is elevated, calcium supplements or phosphate binding agents, parenteral nutrition if it is indicated, enteral nutrition if indicated, initiation of dialysis only if it is necessary, and continuous renal replacement therapy if it is necessary. Most important is the nursing assessment and the diagnosis. Assessment usually focuses on the characteristics of the urine. So you need to assess for urine output. Urine output varies from scanty to a normal volume. Assess blood in the urine. Hematuria may be present in patients with acute renal failure. Assess laboratory results, which may increase, decrease, or stabilize, and these may indicate each phase of acute renal failure. The important nursing diagnosis, which is based on the assessment data, 
Uh, the appropriate diagnosis for ARF could include electrolyte imbalance related to increased potassium levels, risk for deficient volume related to increase in urine output. And the nursing interventions, the goals for a patient with ARF are improved nutritional intake, restore fluid balance, reduce metabolic rate, promote pulmonary function, prevent infection, and nursing interventions are aimed at restoring renal function and reducing potential causes of increased renal injury. Thank you. If you have any suggestions, feel free to contribute. And remember to subscribe to get more information about the various disease aspects.